Well, hi to everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by me, Jack, VintageElectronicsGeek.com here. In today's video, we're going to try to fix this camera or we're just going to tear it all apart, tear it up and have fun. That's what I'm thinking. One or the other. I'm now accepting wagers on which one I'm going to do. This is a Kodak Z7590 camera from, I don't remember, about 2005, I believe. I actually own one of these. I bought one of these brand spanking new when they came out. And I got to tell you, it's a uh, fantastic little camera for what it is. Amazing camera. Not too amazing for um, video, but that is how what they were back then. They weren't really a good true video camera camera as you may find today mixed in with your still camera but you know cutting edge cutting edge uh, the complaint on this camera is it's dead it was worse than dead his brain is gone and I, I found this camera at uh, at a uh, local uh, secondhand store and even though I, like I said I own one I thought hey it'd be kind of cool to you know, maybe convert it to IR or, or just whatever. And the price was right. Only, only paid a few bobs for it, a few shillings, a few, uh, few pence, pennies. Whatever country I'm in, you're in, doesn't matter. A few little duckies. So I have with me three, i find my camera. There we go. I have three batteries. Freshly off of the charger, ready to go. And if for whatever reason the batteries don't work, I've got mains voltage I'll hook it up to. So as you saw, the battery is plugged in. Hit the power switch. And it's dead. It must be dead. So we're going to tear this apart and see if we can figure out why is that. I've never tore one of these apart, so it's going to be the first for both you and I. I'm thinking the first thing we want to do is probably get rid of this strap. I hate these straps. All right, like a vertebrae, I'm back. I have took the liberties and removed the strap off camera. And I've also removed the uh, lens hood cover. That way we don't have anything uh, bouncing around in our way. We have a handful of screws right here. We have none that I could see in the battery bay or way down in the slot. Just these four right there. We do have a screw here and a screw in here that you can't see because my finger's in the way. There we go. And we've got two right here. And I have nothing to put them in. So let's get started. The, uh, the bit on this is a PH00, Phillips head size 00, or double aught. And I apologize that my hand may be in your way again. But if you'd like, here, you, uh, you go ahead and grab the screwdriver and do it. Oh, okay. Well, you're no help, are you? I believe I've got all the screws removed from the casing. I do want to bring your attention to this flap right here. You can see there. Uh, it might have seen some water. And there we have first look into the camera. And off of what I'm seeing at this point, it looks good. As you can see, it's full of SMD components. If one of those, one of these tiny SMD components are bad, well, it's going to stay bad. I'm not very good with these tiny SMD components. I have my reference photos, photos taken, and so let's move forward. Well, I might have ran across my first uh, oopsie, or where does that go? 
as I'm in the process of disassembling this camera and looking at you know any obvious signs of corrosion or blown up pieces of parts or whatnot uh, I've successfully removed the back and I flip the camera around and I look down on the bench and I find this little rod thing is is I have no idea where it came from where it goes or what it does I thought maybe it went into the battery door but I mean that would make plausible sense that it's that length but I'm just not seeing a a key slot for that to go down into but I could be totally wrong looked here on the back of this camera uh, this half and same thing I don't see uh, an obvious slot of where it could have went so I'm going to say at this point in time if I've done nothing else I, I've got a parts or camera and I got to see what it looks like on the inside I'm still in the process of tearing this camera down. Uh, when I removed the screws out of this board here, I did note that they were loose. I went ahead and snugged them back up and put the battery in and tried. Still nothing, no power. So I've removed the ribbon cable from here, here. No, oh, no, I lied. From here, here, and here and I'm in the process of trying to remove the board I need to unsolder this my iron is just now hot so I need to hit that and while I was in the process of removing this you could see right here underneath that board I have a spring I have no idea what that attaches to or anything like that so it'll be a big mystery I'm pretty confident at this point in time this camera is going to be a lost cause but we're gonna have fun tearing it up just the same well not tearing it up dissecting it is more like it have the uh, board removed and in doing so somewhere I've lost that spring I do not know where that's at I would like to also bring your attention to these fingerprints that are all up in this those are not mine that's how it was when I pulled it apart I also got fingerprints on the tape so that really surprises me because you know these are assembled generally they're assembled in a clean room environment with white gloves and robots and all that good stuff but apparently not in this instance while I'm tearing this apart I'm trying to calculate a plan of attack because I really didn't have one I knew that I needed to get in somewhere to find out you know power I just tried the battery again and uh, still no power so looking at all this um, down here at the bottom of the camera this is the board that I need to get to this is the board that sits on the docking station this allows power to come in it allows it to charge the battery set the date etc and then right here we have a uh, what is that three and a half millimeter jack I don't know there we go <laughs> I remember what that one does anyway uh, we got the power jack right here oh video is that video I don't know doesn't matter I think that's video but we have power here so that definitely is an indication that yes this is our power board and this is where we need to go one thing while I'm tearing this apart I did find out where the bar came from the bar came from here so that's all all that right there so that's good news so maybe we don't have a pile of uh, 
bits and pieces after all. So my next step is basically a note to myself or anybody that's tearing one of these cameras apart. A lot of the screws are pretty easy to figure out where the what's is and stuff like that. Next screws I need to get to it down here. These four screws down here. You probably can't see them, but again, for my notation. So here's the flash, and that just simply pulled up out of there, and, and the bar runs through this here. It's part of the hinging mechanism for the flash. So, there we go. So again, note to self, note to others, whoever may be tearing one of these apart, what... Um, what you have to look forward to in doing so. So now, so now I gotta, oh, hit that switch. That's why a flash wasn't coming up because the uh, switch wasn't disengaged. There, straight up like that. This white wire goes to this port right here and those that are in photography will recognize that as a external flash port and for those that are not well I'm not telling you what that's for I just told you it's an external flash so and then I had to unsolder this black ground wire off of this board here And the two wires went right here, white, black. If I can get the camera to power on and working, I'm pretty confident I will need to replace this battery. Now this button battery, if I remember correctly, momentarily saves your settings and your clock and stuff like that. So when you pull your battery out, you have like less than about 60 seconds to get this shoved back in there, a new battery, or you have to reset your calendar, which is a, a big pain in the butt with these old cameras, but that's the way it is. All right, let me go ahead and pull this substrate out, subframe out, and uh, in, in uh, I was going to say, in hopes of uh, getting this board pulled out. Here I am the next day. Got this um, disassembled. And I'm down to the flash board. What you're seeing here. The board that I thought I wanted to be at is actually, let's see if I can get it in frame, right there. There's really not much on that board, however I will take a peek at it and uh, check it the best I can for any bad parts. This board here is the flash board. I've got the capacitor for the flash and then the flash itself attached. And I think this is where the problem may lie. On the back side of this board is also the battery compartment. And what I found so far was this aluminum SMD electronic, electronic, electrolytic capacitor, I believe is to be too high in value. Now to read this from the way I'm uh, gathering, because this is not so blatant to read, that the 49 represents the date code. So it's March of 2009. And this is a 470 ohm, or I'm sorry, a 47, gosh, picofarad at 10 volts. When I put it on the capacitor meter, I'm actually getting a reading of 109 picofarads. So a little, 
a little too high. It's turning into a capacitor. Now this may not be the only issue. I have checked some of these components on board and so far just off of continuity or shorts or opens or anything like that the few I've checked I have not had any issue of such. This board is double sided so I need to remove it off of the battery pack to see what's happening over there as well. I do have this value, this can in stock. Unfortunately, I do not have the solder paste in needle. All I got is just solder on the spool. So I went ahead and ordered some today. Unfortunately, that probably won't be for some time after this project is done before I actually get it in. I think what I will do though is I will try to either move forward with trying to remove this with a pair of um, pair of dikes and just cutting it off. But I got to tell you, my uh, track record has not been too great. Uh, last time I did this, I had actually ripped off a solder pad and I had to throw the camera away. Well, I didn't throw it away. It's in a big pile in the parts bin, but point well made. I think though what I'm going to do before I do that, I'm going to just pause and think about realistically my next step. Is that something that I'm willing to do or do I just want to set this aside temporarily and work on another project the best I can. Of course I've got my workbench scattered with its, with its bits and pieces so that would cause a little obstacle for me.